Father God, we come before you. Lord, and even in these unusual and difficult times, we can say thank you. We thank you for the life that we are about to celebrate. We thank you for Loreen, for the gift that she has been and continues to be to so many. Lord, we pray your blessing today. We ask for your help as we remember, as we grieve. And Lord, we ask for your presence to be clearly felt by all of us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I am remembering my grandma. I have so many memories and thoughts swirling through my head. I just want to get them written down. I watched our church service online this morning, and Pastor Mike was talking about how dead the body of Jesus was after he died on the cross. That was the thought I had when I saw my grandma's body lying in her bed. Her body was dead, but that was not my grandma. She had entered the gates of heaven and was celebrating with all her loved ones who had gone before her. Her mama and dad, who she had missed dearly these past few months. Aunt Juanita, who said she knew, who she said she knew would have come to visit if she was still living. My dad, her son, who she told an activities coordinator was coming to visit that day, so she didn't want to leave her table so she wouldn't miss him. And Blanche and Opal, two other sisters, and my sister, Betty, her granddaughter, and many others. I picture her celebrating with everyone, waving her hands in the air, as she did when we lit the candles on her 105th birthday cake. These past few days, I have been looking at all the pictures of her I have on my phone and cherishing all the time I got to spend with her. I don't think there are many people my age who still have a grandma living. I have been so blessed to have her in my life all these years. And so I have a lot of memories. I remember sitting on her lap on Sundays and she would read the Sunday comics to me and usually smelling her fried chicken cooking in the kitchen. I remember her spending the night with us every other Christmas Eve. It was always disappointing when it wasn't our turn to have her stay with us. I remember her stopping her car on the way home from Aunt Barb's because a June bug had gotten in the car and was buzzing in my hair. I was totally freaking out, but she got it out for me. I'm sure this is why I have a paralyzing fear of June bugs to this day. I remember her home movies, and this was before the day of VHS tapes. They were actually filmed and we would set up the projector in her living room and set up the movie screen to watch them. We loved when she played them backwards, too, and she introduced us to the little rascals. I remember she took me to see my first movie at the theater, Mary Poppins, and being the frugal person she was, we popped popcorn at home to sneak into the theater. I remember one New Year's Eve when I was in high school, two of my friends and I picked Grandma up and took her to a movie with us. It was Silver Street with Gene Wilder, I can't remember much about the movie, except I think there were parts I was uncomfortable seeing with my grandma. In keeping with the movie theme, we watched my big fat Greek wedding on a rainy day when we went on a cruise together. I remember when I was pregnant with my son Brandon. I had some medical problems and had to be on bed rest for a few days. She came to help me with my daughter Katie, who wasn't quite two yet. And while she was there, she got down on her hands and knees and cleaned the kitchen floor for me but she was only 70 years old back then. I remember going to visit her in her duplex in Washington when my oldest grandchildren, Skylar and Kane, were probably about two and four years old. She sat on the floor of the living room with them and rolled a ball back and forth. Of course, she was younger then, only about 90. I remember sitting in our hot tub together and sipping pina coladas that Mark made for us. I also remember her being a strong, independent woman. She was always looking out for everyone else. I remember my sister Ruth saying she believed Grandma was our family's prayer warrior, and I have to agree. But I don't remember her ever raising her voice to me, and that is not something my own grandchildren will be able to say about me. 
And then there were her health concerns she always recovered from. Getting hit by an SUV while walking into her volunteer job when she was in the Wendy's. She had to go to the nursing home for about six weeks for some physical therapy, but she returned to her independent living apartment. She did lose her driving privileges after that, and we never really did get over not being, she never really got, a, got, she never got over not being able to drive. And that is a topic you really hope to avoid when you were with her. She recovered from massive blood clots that were shortly, found shortly before her 100th birthday, and they had given her six weeks to live, and she lasted another five years. And I remember sitting in the hospital with her and helping her drink her cocktail for a colonoscopy she had to have for some internal bleeding. She always bounced back. And yet we knew there would come a day when that would not happen. She grew older and weaker, eventually going into the nursing home. The first couple of weeks were extremely difficult for her, and I would sometimes wonder what God's purpose for her life was at the time. At one time, I thought I might be the reason she had to live because I wasn't ready to let go of her yet. But I grew to a place where I thought I could let her go so she wouldn't suffer anymore or be sad anymore. But when I received the news she was gone, I found I wasn't as ready as I thought. Although I know she's in a better place, selfishly, I wish for one more visit, one more hug, one more smile, to have her once more blow me a kiss on my way out the door. I love you, Grandma. We are here today to remember and to say farewell to Loreen Shelley. A woman who has been a tremendous blessing to so many. Loreen has always been full of, uh, full of life, vibrant, active, and joyful. The world will be a little dimmer without her. I'd like to share a bit from Psalm 34 today. This is a psalm that reminds us that even in the midst of sadness, the Lord is always near and the Lord is always good that even when we cannot see him, he hears us. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. One thing I learned quickly about Lorene is that she took her faith very seriously. I know she taught Sunday school for a very long time, and I know that she prayed fervently. The first time I went to visit her in the hospital back in 2016, it was clear to me that while she was there, the Lord was always on her mind. I can honestly say that I was truly blessed by her faith and her faithfulness to the Lord. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Those who look to him are radiant. I cannot think of anyone that this verse describes better than it does Loreen. When I would go and visit her, one of the things that always blessed me was her smile, her joy. I wish that I would have been able to know her when she was younger, because to be more than a hundred and still telling stories and enjoying company, having delight, that's amazing. I read this week that she traveled to Europe at 93 years old and by train to California and back at 98. I've never heard of such a thing as that. Truly, she was gifted not only with long life, but with tremendous fortitude. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. 
The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Grief is a funny thing. It comes to all of us differently, in varying ways and sometimes at unpredictable moments. We who believe know that we do not need to mourn for Lorraine because she is with Jesus, but we grieve her loss in our own lives. You may find that grief is sharpest early on. You may find that you feel little now and, and it comes later. You may cry a good deal or shed no tears at all. Know that it's okay. Let yourself grieve as you need to, knowing that she led a long and full life and now is receiving her reward. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. Imagine the joy Reen is experiencing now. To close your eyes and fall asleep in this world, in a body that is failing, being worn out from a good but long life, and then to open them, all pain and fatigue wiped away forever, to have the next thing you see be the Lord as he beckons you to him and holds you tightly in embrace. To see the faces of beloved saints from long ago, husband, sisters, son, and the sweetness of that reunion. I'm going to say a few more words and, and then I'm going to recite the 23rd Psalm. If you know it, I invite you to say it with me in whatever version you know. You may be saying slightly different words, but that'll be okay. The Lord will understand us. You're encouraged to use any version as we pray it together. Lorene's life was one of joy and love and faith. And as we lay her body to rest, we remember that Lorene isn't here. It's fitting that this is Easter week when resurrection is already on our minds. Lorene is with the Lord, awaiting the day when she will rise again, healthy and whole, and the way the Lord always intended her to be. As the Apostle Paul tells us of the resurrection waiting for us, the body that is the seed is perishable, but it is raised imperishable. It is sown with dishonor, but it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. One day we will see Lorene again, her troubles and infirmities forgotten. In the meantime, we say farewell for a little while as Lorene has fallen asleep. And we find comfort in knowing that she has gone to be with Jesus and that one day she will rise again. 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, you are good. We thank you for an incredible life. We're saddened by the loss and we're saddened that it happened during this time when the celebration, the remembrance, the ceremony, this should be able to happen, cannot. This has been a life well lived. We look forward to the day that the saints can come together to remember her to share about her, to celebrate her as we ought. 
But Lord, we know that Loreen isn't bothered because she's with you. And we praise you for that. We pray these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen.